It all started in February of 1958 in a building at 1530 Queen Anne Avenue North. Seattle got its third television station, Cairo TV Channel 7. Cairo started as an independent, unaffiliated station, but ultimately became affiliated with CBS. Today, Cairo has a modern home near the Seattle Center. Its relationship with CBS remains, but it, like other television stations in the U.S., faces challenges undreamed of 25 years ago. So on the silver anniversary of Cairo Television, a look back and a look ahead on tonight's close-up report. And you'll have a chance to talk with two of the people who run Cairo. Phone in your calls now, the phone number 382-5300. Tonight's close-up report. In just a few minutes, two vice presidents of Cairo will answer your questions on this, our 25th anniversary. Again, the phone number to call is 382-5300. And while we're taking your calls, we'd like to share with you some of what we did in the past year. Give to the Northwest Second Harvest. After nearly two months, the mountain finally blew this morning, sending billowing clouds of ash, gas, and steam up to 30,000 feet into the air. The floodwaters, brown with mud and volcanic ash, smashed into the 20-foot high log decks. The timber clogged the swollen river as the now swift current carried the logs downstream. The sky was turned black over a wide area of eastern Washington. Witnesses say it was darker at mid-morning than during the total eclipse of the sun last year. It looks almost like an atomic bomb blast up there. It's just you can't believe it. It's really devastating. If he finds a guy that's got gray hair like him, we gray hair guys got to stick together. Love your hair. I won't do anything to mine if you want to, I think, to your hair. At some point in the show, he'll go, this is the best audience we've ever had. This is the best audience we've ever had on our show. Then he does his uh, famous, any Catholics in the audience, takes his mic and sprinkles a little holy water. Just slaps it. <laughs> He's going to go with David. He's going to have to shoot it. It's in the air. It looks good. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? The war and drunk driving was the subject of a recent Newsweek cover story. Cairo TV would like to join with Newsweek in declaring war on this killer. Last year, over 500 Washington residents were killed by drunk drivers. Your friends or relatives might be next. When I hit the summit, um, it was just a fantastic feeling. There's no question about it. I guess you work, some, you know, work for something for two or three years, and finally you're at that particular point. So it was spontaneous, uh, the, uh, the emotion from the entire team. And I guess, I guess I could say it was one of the better moments of my life, of a, a great feeling. <laughs> What's the worst thing about being here? Not hearing from my mom.
My mother's getting married tomorrow, but I really don't know if I should be happy or sad about it. A man in the house is just not home. I felt like my father was saying, um, it's your mother's fault, and my mother was saying, it's your father's fault. I had this compulsion to, to go out and ask some lady to marry me. Anybody. <laughs> I look at other people's situations, and I think that I'm really pretty lucky. Standing at the edge of the newest lava flow from Kilauea Volcano, you don't have to be a geologist to know that Kilauea and our Mount St. Helens are very... This is the Dingle Peninsula in the southwestern part of Ireland. It's probably best known in the United States for the film Ryan's Daughter, a movie with absolutely beautiful scenery and a storyline based on five Harlequin novels stapled together. <laughs> Thank you for being with us thus far this afternoon. We hope you continue to watch. Remember, it's very easy to give blood. We're right here at 3rd and Broad at Cairo, and we would love to see you. So stop by and give the gift of life. What was once the eyewitness newsroom temporarily turned into the Telethon's phone bank headquarters. And helping to raise over $1 million for a 10-year total of over $5 million pledged. A little bit of what we did in the past year when we come back. Your questions for the general manager of Cairo Television and the news director of Eyewitness News. Again, the number to call, 382-5300. We'll be right back. Over Washington, people are seeing double. Double fun with two ways to win. Three matches wins up to $5,000. Two matches in a clover wins double. Up to $10,000 instantly. You won't believe your eyes if you see double. Double fun in the lottery. Here comes the leader, the Boeing 757, the world's newest way to fly. The leader with a new kind of passenger comfort. The leader in fuel efficiency. The leader in making sure flying remains the world's best travel value. The Boeing 757, now landing at an airport near you. Taking a few minutes tonight to answer your questions about television on this Cairo's 25th anniversary. The number is 382-5300. And joining me, Glenn Wright, Vice President and General Manager of Cairo Television, and John Lippman, Vice President and News Director of Cairo TV. And we'll take the questions as they're coming in in order. Regarding network programming, live feed, or is it all on tape? Glenn Wright? It's on tape, basically, John. Most of it's on tape. Uh, some of it does come in live, but the majority is on tape that comes in through network. If you were asking, why did you take off late night movies and put the all night news in? Well, all night news is our commitment to news, locally and nationally. Uh, we were the first station to go with uh, 5 o'clock news, our commitment to local programming, 7 o'clock news, close up at 11.30. And a part of that commitment is not only locally but nationally with the CBS News. Go back to uh, this past political campaign, John Lippman, the uh, viewer asking, why was there not more emphasis on the fact that Scoop Jackson wasn't debating his opponent? We felt that we emphasized it to uh, the degree it was uh, worth, uh, I guess, uh, is the answer. We have a, a number of judgments we have to make in a highly partisan issue in that campaign, for example, and one candidate's issue is, is not the other candidate's issue, and you have to make up your mind as to uh, uh, where to gear your coverage. There's a question that could take uh, three or four days to answer. How do we get our information for the news, and uh, how do we know where so many things are happening. Well, we get it from a variety of sources. The, the first uh, being some wire machines, which used to be in the back of the newsroom, but, but which are now out of sight. Uh, the wire services, United Press International, and the Associated Press. The uh, other uh, ways we get information are from letters from viewers, phone calls from viewers, press conferences, which are rather organized events, as, as you know, uh, where people will, will call us with uh, one uh, partisan uh, issue or another and uh, our own reporters who uh, ask questions of their neighbors and uh, ask, ask why as they're uh, driving down the street. A caller from Kent wants to know who our commentator... I, I feel like I should answer these <laughs> questions. I know the answer. <laughs> who was the commentator before John Miller? Well, there was no commentator before John Miller. John is the first Cairo commentator. Uh, Cairo has in the past had editorialists, and uh, 
uh, Ken Hatch, the uh, current president of Cairo, is the uh, delivers the editorials. Uh, prior to Ken, Lloyd Cooney, uh, who was the president of Cairo, delivered the editorials. Which brings us to a question from Federal Way. What happened to Lloyd Cooney, and uh, where is he now? Is that right? Uh, Lloyd is, uh, we in fact, we work with Lloyd with the Super Channel. <coughs> he is on a consulting basis, works with the Sonics, the Super Channel. He's keeping very busy at that. Plus, he's also a consultant for the Mariners and some other organizations. So Lloyd is, uh, we work with him quite a bit. And he's doing very well, and he's very busy on a consulting basis. Glenn, another question for you. A person saying, if I have a complaint about Cairo Television and I call the operator and leave a message with the switchboard at Cairo, does it have any effect? How many calls does it take to get something changed? Well, we, we log every call that comes in through the switchboard during off uh, hours, during working hours, through programming department, through our promotion department. And uh, they can write in, they can call in, and we do respond to those, John. Okay, uh, John Lippman, do we have another helicopter pilot besides Chuck Sakati? Yes, we do. Of course we do. Yes. His name is Clark Stahl, and uh, he works uh, in the evenings for us. We've hired our, our pilots on the basis of safety. Chuck uh, is on the air. Clark flies at night. Okay. Another question. This is a rather specific question, but a lot of people might have similar questions. This regards a specific story that was seen, a news story that was seen on the station, and they want to find out more about the story. How do people do that? What what should be the policy? I think the first thing they should do is as soon as they see it and as soon as you have a, a question is call the station, call the main, uh, main Cairo number which is 624-7077. They'll ring you back to the newsroom where uh, we have people who are able to answer the questions uh, about the content of the story. Generally you should wait until after the program is over because the, all the scripts, the pieces of paper we all uh, use are, are tied up until then. Uh, if, you, if we can give you a satisfactory answer, we'll do that. If not, uh, either call the next morning. Our business hours are from 8.30 to 6 or 6.30. And uh, if uh, that doesn't work, uh, uh, write us a letter and we'll, we'll get you what you need. We're already out of time and I can't get to, to the rest of the questions we have, but I want to throw in one of my own last for each of you. 25 years of Cairo, what do you see in the next 25 years? John Lippman. I think television stations are going to become more like radio stations. That is, they will specialize. And uh, as uh, Vice President and News Director of Cairo, uh, I'm, uh, I think that our future is, is firmly based in news and information programming. And I think that's going to be Cairo's niche, whereas other stations may be the comedy station or the, the western station or the old rerun station. I think ours will be in uh, the here and now kind of programming that's so vital to people. Glenn Wright, same question for you. What do you see in the next one? John, minutes? basically the same answer. It's localism, it's more local <coughs> programming, more news, more information. One thing a satellite can't provide you 23,000 miles away, that's in-depth reporting uh, in the courtroom locally what's going on. Uh, more local programming, sports, uh, that would be basically it. Getting more into that area, meeting the needs and interests of the community, uh, which the other uh, you know, new technologies can't provide. They cannot do that local programming. Uh, but we will be getting to some of them, like teletext and some of the new technologies that we've been experiment with, experimenting with over the past year, providing more information for our viewers locally. Let me take a moment to thank both of you for staying up with us tonight. Glenn Wright, who is a Vice President and General Manager of Cairo Television. John Lippman, Vice President and News Director of Eyewitness News. Our thanks to both of you and to all of our viewers for calling in their questions. And with that, that's our report for tonight. We'll be back with another edition of Close Up again tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>